Welcome back to another episode of The Investment Advisor. I'm your host, Matthew Stevenson, in partnership with Ducas Copy TV. Remember, money can take care of you, it cannot take care of itself. Well, we're in the summer season, heat wave in Europe, heat wave in the United States, always hot in Asia in the summer months of July and August. So I thought we'd take a look at one of the vacation stocks, Carnival Cruise Lines. Yep, one of the biggest, if not the biggest in the world, in terms of providing beds at sea. It's a floating hotel. They own more than 100 ships all around the world. A lot of it in the North American cruise market in the winter time. A lot of that's in the Mediterranean in the, uh, in the summertime. Also getting into Asia and taking delivery each year on a number of new ships. All in all, Carnival Cruise Line's a success story. They've got a lot of brands. They run their ships in a cost-efficient way. And they're beneficiaries too. And one of the reasons I thought we'd look at it was with Cuba opening up, who's going to win? Well, one of the companies I thought would be an immediate winner would be Carnival Cruise Lines. Got their bases in Florida. They fill up their ships with a couple of thousand passengers, go over to Havana where they have permission to land, spend a couple of days tied up in maybe in Havana, maybe outside of Havana, and People feel they've seen, quote, the new Cuba without actually kind of staying in some of the local hotels. Is Carnival Cruise Lines, however, a stock that you want to own? Could very well be. $51, $52 a share. It's, it's, it's priced fully in the sense 17, 18 times earnings. Well-managed company. What I like about Carnival Cruise Lines, and I don't take it away at all from this company, is that they're willing to increase the dividend pretty much on a quarterly annual basis. The management of the company, while it's kind of held fairly tightly held in a couple, in a bit one or two families, various trusts, they will share their success with their shareholders. Always a good sign. So the dividend is going up, and that's something that shareholders can can enjoy. You can see up from 30 to 50, that's a that's a big win. What's the risk with Carnival Cruise Lines? Well, they were the owners of that ship in Italy that ran up against the rocks and turned over when the captain was uh, not on his watch. And, uh, and there's always a reputational risk when you're dealing with 200,000 people floating around in a confined space, a ship. They can sink, they can catch on fire, they can do a lot of things that they're not supposed to do. And so you've got, to, you've got to balance the success of most people have a good time cruising when something goes bad, food poisoning, a boat going down, whatever it is, that's not going to reflect well on the overall parent company. I think the risk with, with Carnival Cruise Lines is it's a hotel business. The internet prices these cruise ships almost on an hourly basis. Many websites now have set up to price and reprice and offer competing competing costs, a cost basis on some of these ships. So you've got to keep in mind when you're looking at whether you want to own Carnival Cruise Lines or not, is will they be able to keep their margins? Will they be able to continue to grow, say in Asia, parts of Europe, which may not be as competitively priced as North America? I think it's a good company. I think it's a good stock. I think it's too expensive, so I'm not a buyer at 51, and um, I'm hoping that in a, in a pullback, maybe at a 30, 35 dollars, that might be an attractive level. Well, that's all the time we have today on the Investment Advisor. I'm your host, Matthew Stevenson, in partnership with Ducas Copy TV. Remember, money can take care of you; it cannot take care of itself.